today we're going to do something a little different. Today we're going to do a labeling review. This is something that's often done by either the quality manager of a company, somebody in the quality assurance department, or it's done by somebody in the regulatory affairs department. And many companies have somebody trying to do both uh, functions. So I've had both jobs. Um, I've done a lot of label reviews. The company will uh, have somebody in marketing a lot of times design the label. But the key thing is to make sure the content is correct. And you're actually required to have both your labeling content and any of your marketing materials, including your website, reviewed by a regulatory person or at least somebody with regulatory training for content to make sure that you're not making claims that you're not allowed to make. But this is more the basic regulatory requirements for labeling of a medical device. And the device that I chose is something we've all seen before if you're an adult, a pregnancy test. So I went to the store today. I just picked up a pregnancy test. I picked the cheapest generic one out there. Um, and um, it, it was at our local um, grocery store. And I have it. This one isn't C Mark B as we're located in the US, but I'm going to show you how to do a labeling review of this type of device to the US regulations. So, does it meet the requirements? And just as a spoiler alert here, I, we used to do this all the time when we were training uh, notified body auditors at BSI. And we, we would have a C marking class and we would actually go out and get a bunch of product and we it would be labeled for C marking. And when we would share these, we never found a label that met the requirements, ever. <laughs> there was always something wrong with one of the labels. Didn't matter what product it was, there was always something wrong. It's sort of like reviewing any kind of a paper you write. If you review your own work, you'll always miss something. You need to give it to another person and tell them to do a review of specific items, and they will find your mistakes every time. So, And, and they can look at it tomorrow and find more mistakes. So there will be mistakes. You will find them on product that's on the market. Just because it's on the market does not mean it's right. And I guarantee you, we will find something today. But I, I haven't done a pre-review. I'm just going to show you how I do this and show you how quick it really can be. So we're just focusing on US FDA regulations, which are shorter because this is a live video here. We're not going to do the whole CE marking thing, and I don't have a CE mark product. But what I do is I go to the 21 CFR 801 regulation. So that's the Electronic Code of Federal Regulations, EF, sorry, ECFR.gov. That's where the latest version of the regulations are. The access.gov is not always perfectly up to date, and uh, the user interface is a little easier to use on the electronic website. Link is down below, so you can just click on that link and go right to the page. Because I've done this hundreds of times, I'm going to do this at the table of contents level. You can read every single line item you want, but it will give you the basic concept. I'm just going to go with the table of contents level. So on the left-hand side of the menu, it gives me table of contents. It's the first icon at the very top. It says table of contents. has a little book there. I click on that, and I can scroll up and down through this table of contents it gives me. So the first section, subpart A, is general labeling provisions. B is labeling requirements for UDI. C is labeling requirements for over-the-counter, and this is over-the-counter. I bought it without a prescription, and it, I'm not a healthcare professional, so I can't uh, use it with an implied prescription. Uh, that's a lot of people don't realize implied prescriptions are still prescription products. And then subpart D, exemptions from adequate direction for use. You need instructions on how to use a pregnancy test. It's over the counter, but it's still an IVD and you need to read instructions. Um, subpart E, other exemptions. There's no other exemption for this. Um, there are some things like condoms that have special labeling requirements. That's the next section. Subpart H, special requirements for special devices. And condoms is on the list. That's why I didn't pick a condom. I picked these instead. So um, we'll start at the top. The first thing in there is medical devices, name and place of business, of manufacturer, packer, or distributor. Well, when I look around on this package, here we go. Right here. And I, I don't know how well this is going to work for you being able to see it here. Um, yeah, it's not really going to work. So anyway, it says distributed by Food Hold USA. So 
grocery store chain or uh, brokers or consolidators of a bunch of groceries that other certain distributors carry. And it says that the product is not manufactured or distributed by Church and Dwight or Amcal LLC distributors of first response. So what they're basically saying is it's similar to first response. So somewhere on here, they're making a claim just like first response or comparing it to the, the performance of first response, but they're not made by first response. So there, that's a disclaimer. This is made by a wholesale distributor that's selling it to a whole bunch of grocery stores. So that's one of the things that, that they do have on here is they say who it's distributed by. So that was an option, either manufactured by or manufactured for or distributed by. This one says distributed by, so we met that requirement. And it has the name of the company and it has the address. It doesn't have a, a street address. It just has Landover, Maryland and a zip code. But it's probably a big enough company. They won't have any problems finding it. And further on, somewhere in the inside, they probably give me more information. So as long as the complete information is somewhere, it's going to be okay. Um, the next section is definitions. We don't need to cover definitions. That's not a requirement. It's just explaining different concepts if you're new to this. Meaning of intended uses. So the, this device is a pregnancy test, and it provides early detection of pregnancy hormone. So that's what the intended use of this is. Um, and then they're going to give more details in the indication for use on the insert. But that's one of the requirements here. Um, misleading statements is an item on here. Um, this is important. The next item, uh, medical devices, prominence of required label statements, use of symbols and labeling. So a while back, they used to require text in English next to each symbol you used. Now they allow you to use recognized symbols or the English character. But if you have the symbols in the instructions or insert, you have to have a, a legend that explains each symbol. So um, symbols um, are not really being used on this anywhere on the outside. They may be used on the inside of this, uh, but they're not used on the outside. They just have words, but that is it something like Rx only could be on here if it was a prescription only product, uh, but it's not prescription only. Uh, they have a Spanish language section. This is not labeled Spanish, but they do have an option for that, specifically for Puerto Rico or in addition to English. And then they have formats of dates provided on the medical device label. So the new requirements since they implemented UDI is four, four digits for the year. So 2020, three for the year it was manufactured, but they usually put the expiration date on here. So three-year product expiration is typical. Sometimes it's four or five years. Sometimes it's one. Sometimes it's been on the shelf for a long time. Typically, I would expect today it to be 2026 and then dash and then the month, two digits, and then the day, two digits. This says 2026, 0 to 28. So if you can see it, I think you can now. Um, it has it has the right format and it has the lot right underneath it, lot number, but it's not using any symbols. So this was probably manufactured in February 28th of this year and probably had a three-year expiration, so it expires in 2026. So everything looks good so far. The next item um, is subpart B, requirements for UDI. And on here, we have a UPC barcode on there. We do not have a UDI. And you're supposed to have UDI on each level of the packaging. So on the device itself, if it's big enough and, and it can be legibly put on there, and then on the primary packaging, if it's a sterile product, and then the outer packaging. So each level would have its own UDI. And you would have to differentiate what the different UDIs are for the different level of packaging in the GUDID database information that you enter. But this one doesn't have a UDI on the outside. So what's going on? Oh, it's UPC. So there is an exemption for using UPC instead of UDI, but not on a class two IVD, only on class one device. So this isn't meeting the UDI requirements. Now it could be manufactured so long ago that um, it was before position date, but I'm guessing it was probably made this year and probably doesn't meet the requirements. And they can't just not room because there's plenty of room on this packaging. It's a really large box. 
So doesn't meet the requirements. And I have plenty of space down here to put a UDI. Not there. Maybe it's on the inside, but not on the outside like it's supposed to be. So as I promised you, we'd find a labeling issue already. Does the FDA have time to go out there and police this? No. Do they have all the information that would be on the UDI? Everything except the actual location, like that GTIN, the beginning part, the prefix, that's not there. But I do have the lot in expiration date, which would be part of that. But not 100% traceability like I'd like. So now let's open it up. Um, see what else that we have here. Oh, and it, um, there's some labeling. Part C is labeling requirements for over-the-counter devices. Principal display panel, statement of identity. So it does say what it is. Um, it says the next one is declaration of net quantity of contents. So it says two tests on it right on the front. This is two right there. Um, let's see what else are the requirements. Medical device warning statements for devices containing or manufactured with chlorofluorocarbons. No chlorofluorocarbons here. So we don't have to worry about that. So let's open it up. So I feel like this is an unboxing video here, but not nearly as cool. Um, it's regulatory. So we have our we have our insert here. So that's our insert, and we'll go through that in a minute. And we have our product, and it's packaged in a in a uh, foil pouch to protect it. Um, there is no UPC code on this. There is no UDI on this. Um, so if you look here. You can see there's no UPC or UDI on it. If I flip it over, none there. But they did on this side, they put the IVD symbol. So I got to, it's hard to do both at the same time. So they do have the IVD symbol. So they use that symbol. They also have the temperature storage symbol. And then they have a CE marking. So this is a CE mark product. And then they have the, the single use only symbol. And then they have some lot information. So this isn't even meeting all the European requirements either. Um, it's meeting some of them, but it's not meeting all of them. Um, we're not doing a CE marking labeling review. We're just doing FDA right here. But they do give the actual manufacturer, SPD Swiss Precision Diagnostics GmbH. They say the address um, of the, the company. Um, so th they do have that in here. And now let's go to the actual insert and see what they have in here. So they should have a legend somewhere saying what the symbols, different different symbols mean. So do we have a legend in here saying what the different symbols mean? No, we do not. <laughs> so we missed that requirement. So even though it has IVD here uh, and they have the C marking and they have the temperature symbol, and they have the do not reuse. None of that information is shared on here. They have no legend of any kind on here. Uh, they do have some instructions in different languages, Spanish specifically, which is helpful to people that speak Spanish and don't uh, read English very well. Uh, they do have Q&A section here. They have step-by-step -step instructions. So before you begin, how to use the test, how to read your result. So the instructions give you what this device is supposed to do but it doesn't, and it gives you a part number down here for this actual label. So we have, and it looks like 921 is the revision date. So they've given me a, a part number and they've given me a revision number. That's something that you're required to have on labeling of any kind, just as a revision control. Uh, but they, they don't meet the requirements for the symbols at all. And they don't say who it's manufactured by on this anywhere. So it's, oh, wait, on the back side it does. It says in in um, other languages that it's manufactured. Okay, so on the front, on the English, way down here in the bottom, it says manufacturer, SPD, Swiss Precision. So they do have the name and address of the manufacturer. Um, they, don't, they don't say anything else, though. So there are some things missing here. Uh, but this doesn't have to be very long. You just go through the different requirements, like principal display panel. And you read what the requirements are for that. Statement of identity, we verified that. Declaration of net quantities, and then warning statements. So they do have warning statements in here. Do they use a warning symbol anywhere? No. There's no warning symbol anywhere in here to clearly identify it as a warning. That's the um, triangle with the exclamation point. That's not in here. 
Uh, they do have a little symbol, a little pictorial up here, uh, right there, with an X on it. So that's saying, uh, do not point the absorbent tip upward. The test will not function properly. So they're telling you not how, how to not operate the device. So it's preventing a use error. So that is a warning, uh, but they don't identify this warning. They don't use the word warning on here in any way, shape, or form. Um, they don't actually say what the indication for use are. So I know it doesn't meet the FDA's requirements. Um, because they're supposed to have indication for use, clearly identified. Nope. <laughs> it's actually supposed to say indication for use and then say right next to it. Um, so this there's a lot of things wrong with this label. So this labeling review wasn't done correctly. And it's a product on the market. It's probably sold by the millions. <laughs> so it's not that hard. You just go line by line through this A, B, C. And you probably don't even have to get to D because that's exemptions. So A, B, and C, subparts A, B, and C of 21 CFR 801. Uh, that's where you find the requirements. And just go line by line each item. And like, do they have it? Do they not have it? And if you're not sure, ask. And we're available as a regulatory consultant. We, can, we know of other regulatory consultants that do this on a regular basis. Almost all of us have checklists where you can document you did your review and where the information is. You could even like snap a little picture with your cell phone you just snap a little picture and crop it and then paste it into your labeling checklist to show where it is located. In the FDA, when they ask you to do a 510K, they say, what page can this be found on? So it was in the original approval of this product when they got the 510K, but it's not on here now. So somebody didn't copy the labeling content that they were required to when they got their 510K. And they made changes. Somebody said it was okay, probably from marketing, but they didn't have a regulatory review. Or some re more likely here, this was repacked. So repackager and relabeler is probably at fault here. So distributed by this company, Food Hold USA, they're probably to blame. I'm just guessing here. I apologize if I'm wrong. But that would be the most likely scenario because the manufacturer on the inside doesn't match what's on the outside. So they probably bought these, packaged it like this. for the. So this was bought in bulk. This was manufactured. This was manufactured. They repackage and relabeled, and they don't probably have a quality system that has adequate label review. They may not even know they need a quality system. So that's how this stuff happens. So if you have a quality system uh, and you're registered with the FDA as a repackage or relabeler, you need to have a labeling review process. You need to have a labeling checklist, and it needs to go through these three parts, subpart A, B, and C, and make sure you meet the requirements. And yes, as a repackager label, you're responsible for the UDI, not the company that gave you the bulk, because it's your name on the outside of the product. So that's something that you're required to have. Um, and you should probably even be putting a sticker on here as well for the UDI, because different levels of package, inner packaging, outer packaging. So that's what you're supposed to do for a labeling review. I, if you have any questions down below, like I said, I put the link to the regulations. You can pull it up and see what the requirements are yourself. Or another link that I gave you is a link for Lindsay Walker. You can schedule an appointment with her and she can give you a proposal for labeling review or helping with a quality system or a 510 case mission. But not a, not a class one device that's exempt. You have to have that. So if you work for the company that made this, give me a call and we'll help you out. Um, hope that was helpful to everybody and see you next week. Bye-bye.